What's up guys, today I'm going to be showing you the best Undertale Monster Mania Roblox game. Yep, this beats Undertale Universal Massacre, it's just that good. The game is called Deltarune 3D RPG Supreme, it's got kind of an ass name, but ignore that for now. Thanks to Pokegamer3 for the idea. So when you spawn in, a recorded Ralsei will start telling you how to play the game, which is quite nice since usually these types of games don't really give you a tutorial. I will admit that Ralsei does yap for way too long, so I'll just recap what he says. Ralsei tells the player about how to enter battle, what supreme mode is, and how to activate it. He tells you that red circles are teleporters and white circles are shops, tells you about save points, how to craft souls, and starts waffling about the soul book. Afterwards, you get free room of the circus world and dark world, and you're pretty much free to do whatever you want. Yeah, I won't lie, the gameplay is identical to every single other Undertale Monster Mania clone. All you do is kill a few enemies and level up, but what makes this game stand out is all these cool little puzzles and secrets you can find and solve to make your progression faster. There's this cool tile switching puzzle which is inspired from Deltarune and lets you obtain a dice brace. Another cool thing about this game is that there's rushes. These rushes are a nice change and they're pretty cool. The spade rush is definitely well executed. The bosses in this game are basically all Deltarune bosses, with a few exceptions. The bosses in this game are actually pretty cool. All the bosses in this game seem to have a sense of personality, and they aren't just brain-dead spam, which forces the player to actually run away instead of just bomb-rushing the boss. The unique thing about the bosses in this game is that there's a hard mode that you can activate. This hard mode is called Supreme Mode and makes the boss more difficult. In return, if you beat this boss, you get twice the EXP and gold rewards, and you might even get some a little something extra. Another cool thing about the Supreme Mode is that it can actually change the story. In regular mode, Lancer flees out on his bike, but in Supreme Mode, you break his bike just to beat the absolute living crap out of the little sh**. The game also does spaking really well, his boss fight is my favourite in the game. Now, it's not an Undertale Monster Mania game if there isn't some ridiculously overpowered boss. After you clear Spade King and Javel, you go into... Uh, not too sure what the this is, but you've got three bosses and two rushes to clear. The first boss is the GOAT rules card. To be honest, well, I'm kind of surprised the game didn't make an absurdly up overpowered the f***y fan game that he had, so this fight was a welcome surprise. The first part of this fight requires you doing two easy puzzles, which just emphasizes that this game isn't soulless and the bosses actually have personality. Then the real fight begins. I won't lie, this boss is actually easier than Javel, so I recommend that you get Duke Epulets before fighting Supreme Javel. The next bosses are the Three Kings. This consists of a mini boss rush of the King of Hearts, Diamonds and Clubs. I won't lie, at first it may look easy, but the Three Kings of Yapping can actually f*** over. The King of Hearts are the lightning attacks which for some reason can deal 1000 damage. The King of Diamonds is actually pretty weak. You probably won't die to him, but the King of Clubs is by far the hardest. It's basically just a buff clover fight, except now he can do a stupid melee dash which has the worst hitbox. They drop the Darkened Trio Clown, which has a chance to deal around 950 damage when you're hit. Honestly, the Royal Body Armor, which drops on Supreme Rose card, is better since it does guarantee 1000 damage, but if you're wanting to gamble, you can use the Crown. The next boss is Undyne the Undyne. To be honest, at first this boss looks hard, but all you're really gonna do is wait for this attack to end. Everything else is pretty easy to dodge. Then you've got to do Enemy Rush. This is actually pretty easy, the hardest boss you'll fight here is Head Happy. Now it's time for the final fight, which is a boss rush consisting of all the bosses you've fought previously. Most of the weapons are actually pretty balanced and usually have a special ability which comes with them. It makes the game a lot more fun, unlike your average grind fest. Some weapons even have passives like the Burnt Spear, which does 1 damage per tick if you run an M1. Some weapons even have combos, which boost the soul of the weapon. The armors are also up to a high standard, they usually have a passive and some armors can even fight back. As of now, there are 4 obtainable souls. Whoa. 5 if you include fear, but I don't have it because I'm broke. There's bravery, which is pretty and you shouldn't ever use it unless you're grinding clover. It specializes in DPS and iframes, I guess. Its first move is a shockwave, its second move is a little bit more complicated, but from what I can tell, it's a charge move which deals loads of damage until you get hit. Its last move teleports you to the boss, and you do a fist beatdown on the enemy with iframes. The second soul you can obtain is kindness. Now, this soul should be used for long fights like Undyne. Three Kings and Rules card. I won't explain the two first two abilities because they are but the third ability lets you heal yourself. The next soul, and my personal favourite soul, is Integrity. This soul is just for kindness, but I find it more useful. The first ability with Integrity increases your speed for a short moment. The third ability lets you get four dodges, which is pretty cool and basically the only reason I even use the soul. The second ability is just awful. Don't use it ever. It's so bad. 
It actually f***s you over instead of the boss. It teleports you a short distance, but all it really does is just teleport you up the map. Please just rework this and turn it into something else. The last soul is the egg soul, which I can't be asked explaining, just read the soul book. Oh wait, it's not in the soul book. My bad, my bad, my bad chat. Now I've yapped on about all these bosses for a pretty long time, but how long does it actually take to fight them? It's not too long to be honest, it only takes about 2 hours or so to do the main storyline, depending on how focused you are on the grind and how good your weapons are. The fastest way to level up is to just grind Supreme Clover, since they give a thousand XP and they're pretty fast to kill. The only problem is that after you're at the game, you might die, but there's not really any other ways to make the grind faster, unfortunately. This game is better than Undertale Last Reset. Go play this game instead of that duh. Like, subscribe, bye. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed the video, now I'm going to spend the next 3 minutes advertising my Discord server because I need to stretch the video to 8 minutes to boost my video on the algorithm. Uh, whilst you're here, might as well comment because it helps me out I guess, you know, it might, might boost my video, maybe some other people can see it, you know. My videos are goaded, so you know, you might as well. Uh, if you enjoy my videos a lot, then you can join my Discord server and talk to other like-minded people, I guess. I might do a few competitions every so often where you can win Robux, but you know, I might. I don't know. I'm kind of broke right now, so we'll, we'll see. I won't lie, my server is kind of dead, but it will mean a lot to me if you join it. So, uh, but yeah, thanks again for watching. Uh, I might as well just shout out some random people that have commented because I've got nothing else to do. Let's check we've got. Uh, Spencer Marshall. Uh, I don't know. Wait, let me check. Let me go find some other people who've commented. You've got the Undertale Man, Frostberg six three eight three, Kit Kat nineteen oh eight, Cage Zombie eight eight two eight. Yeah, you guys are all good. Th thanks for watching that video. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. It's, it's probably been three minutes. Oh no, it's only been a minute and a half. Yeah, I reckon I'll, I need to go waffle a bit more. Uh, if you made it this far, you might as well comment, tell me what, what kind of games you guys want me to play next. I'm kind of bored of Undertale games, I don't really want to play this shit anymore. Uh, I, might play, I might do another Sans Funny Boss Rush video, since a lot of people like that game, I guess. Uh, yeah, you guys tell me what to do. Then we got Undertale Sans, and that game's dead as hell though. Soul Ops 2. I don't know. You, you guys tell me in the comments. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Thanks to Mink of Cat Adventures for basically giving me all the information about the game. They're like the only other YouTuber who makes videos in this game. So, thank you, shout out to them. Cheers for that. Uh, you guys should probably go play TS Underspot. TS Underspot's a pretty good game. Uh, <laughs> shit, I've got nothing to say, bro. It's kind of hard to waffle for three minutes, not even joking. And then we also we've got uh, Undertale Multiverse. Oh yeah, that's a new game. I'll probably make a video on that because it's made by like a UTMF game developer. So I'll probably play Undertale Multiverse Mayhem by Multiverse Madness Studios. You guys remember when Undertale Hour of Judgment was a, a popular game? Yeah, no, I, I don't remember either. Anyways, that's three minutes, so. I'll stop yapping, and yeah, thanks to everyone who watched. See you in the next one. Bye, guys.